Today in the news, we got some AMD, Nvidia, and a blast from the past. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. Big Navi is all everyone is waiting for, and it seems like we're getting closer and closer to its release. The company has just passed its official Korean RRA certification, and we all know what that means, right? Of course not. So the timeline for these certifications have been very close to the release date. The RX 5600 XT with the model number D32501 was certified on December 3rd and the card was released on January 21st of this year. The 5500 XT on the other hand passed the certification process on November 27th and was released on December 12th. As for their new certification, it passed today so the release could be very very close. With AMD about to release more information on RDNA 2 next month, we might get a little tease of what it's capable of. Hopefully, this also pushes Nvidia to show off Ampere or Hopper as soon as possible, likely at GTC in March. Speaking of Nvidia, the next gen cards are said to be about 70 to 75% faster than existing parts. This info comes from the Indiana University, who are building their big red 200 supercomputer with the help of 256 next gen Nvidia GPUs. This 70 to 75% number is based on the fact that originally, big red 200 was supposed to use Tesla V100, but an opportunity to wait a little longer presented itself for a major boost. Big red 200 will have less GPUs for an estimated additional two petaflops of performance. Also in AMD news, although it's not very news, did you notice how cheap the older parts are becoming? I mean, there's already the elusive R5 1600 at uh, 85 bucks, but now Newegg is selling the eight core Ryzen 7 2700 for 135 bucks. Sure, it's not as fast in gaming compared to the R5 3600, but it's damn close at $65 less and it can hold its own in productivity. If you wanted to build a budget system, this one is a killer deal. Moving on, Flash and Shockwave games, the pinnacle of my teenage internet time in the 2000s slash early 2010s. Well, Shockwave died last year in April and Adobe will officially stop supporting Flash on December 31st. While it doesn't mean that you won't be able to use it, it does mean that it's going to get harder and harder. That's where Blue Maxia comes in. They created a launcher called Flashpoint cool name, that gives you access to over 36,000 Flash games, good and bad. They scavenged the most popular Flash game websites and made basically a repertory. You can download the entire library, which is a whopping 288 gigabytes when extracted, or just get the launcher and download as you go. Now that's what I call internet preservation. <laughs> Speaking of a sort of time capsule, Yahoo is about to reopen theirs next month. In case you didn't know, back in 2006, the company opened submissions to it to capture the essence of 2006. At first, they wanted to beam the information with a laser from a pyramid in Mexico to communicate with aliens, which I mean, cool, I guess, but the idea was scrapped really quickly. And now all that information is stored at the Smithsonian in Washington. On Yahoo's 25th anniversary, which is March 2nd of this year, the capsule will reopen. Even though 14 years doesn't seem like much for a time capsule, I'm sure those of us who were computer savvy enough around that time will look into it and realize how fast things have changed. I mean, I think back then my computer at home still had like a large format floppy drive and uh, it supported maximum 8-bit color. Yeah, I was computerly challenged. And in Intel news, the speed of their upcoming 10900K has been spotted on 3 d Mark. According to the benchmark run, the 10-core CPU will have a base clock of 3.7 GHz and a boost all the way up to 5.1. If we ignore the horrible power consumption numbers that have been floating around, this CPU could allow Intel to keep saying that they're the kings of gaming. Now, notice I said Intel would keep saying that, so don't go off in my comment section, please. One thing to note here is that this 5.1 GHz number might not be the actual boost clock of the CPU, but a result of Intel's thermal velocity boost, which goes beyond the regular turbo boost clocks, depending on uh, the cooling. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, you could leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. So subscribe to the channel, stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.